not as bad as all that. No, I agree it isn't. It's worse. Claire. I'm sorry things haven't worked out with you and Greg. I don't ever want to hear that name again. I am never going to mention his name again. All right. I mean, Greg. Yeah, I know who you mean. Look, Claire, I'm sorry you and... <laughs> broke up. We didn't break up. He chucked me for another woman, for a whole procession of other women. Yes, well, I always thought he was too smooth to be true. All those red roses and candlelit dinners. Claire, I'm sorry about what's happened, but life must go on. Must it? Yes, it must. Why? Well, it... Well, I suppose that... Look, I don't know, do I? You just take my word for it. It must. You don't seem to be handling this very well, Sarah. <laughs> now, listen, Claire. Mother. What? Just leave her be. Leave her be? Leave her be? What kind of advice is that? What would have happened during the last war if Winston Churchill had left things be? <laughs> don't think Winston Churchill is really relevant in these circumstances, Mother. Winston Churchill is always relevant, Sarah. That's one of the marks of his greatness. Now, listen, Claire. Mother. Allow me to handle this, Sarah. All it requires is a little tact and understanding. Now, Claire, you mustn't take it to heart. Just because Greg's met someone he finds more attractive than you. <laughs> oh, well, full marks for the old tact and understanding, Mother. Nope. No? No, I have few unalterable principles about this bookshop, but one is that I won't have a romance section. Very popular. Not with me. Raising expectations that can't possibly be fulfilled. I mean, do women still go for all that corny nonsense? Afraid so. I have my daughter drooped over every available sofa as living proof of it. Nope. Women's lib still hasn't stopped the average female going all gooey over a bunch of red roses and a candlelit dinner. Yes, I suppose something must account for the success of Barry Manilow. <laughs> no advance on the Greg front? No, the flowers have stopped, just as I trained the delivery boy that the red roses were for the upstairs flat, that they couldn't possibly be for me, that widows in their 40s don't get flowers except on Mother's Day if they're lucky. Ah, oh, perhaps I should send you some. Oh, dear. Was I sounding self-pitying? No. Meaning yes. Well... Yes. Anyway, no more flowers for Claire. Ooh. In fact, nothing for Claire except long, maudlin conversations with her mother into the small hours. Poor old Sarah, you look exhausted. <laughs> Is your mother still being a pain as well? Not so bad at the moment. She's spending more time at the bridge club and that seems to be channelling her energies away from Claire. <laughs> Lovely idea, channelling energies. You know, if someone could invent a sort of treadmill for channelling the emotional energies of people who haven't got proper outlets for them, they'd clean up. Yeah, and if they could harness my mother to it, you could run the national grid off her. <laughs> Mother. Sorry, dear. You all right? What, you? All right. All right? Yes. <laughs> Are you? Yes, dear, of course. Why do you ask? Well, you haven't said anything for 20 minutes. <laughs> Silence isn't a symptom of ill health, Sarah. In your case, I'd say it was. <laughs> it's just that for the last 20 minutes, you've been staring out of the window. Oh, not staring, dear. No? No, just looking. Oh, of course, I forgot it's rude to stare, isn't it? Winston Churchill wouldn't have stared, would he? <laughs> Sorry, dear. Oh. Do you like some more tea? What, dear? More tea! Oh. Thank you, sir. Oh, I haven't even started my last cup yet. Mother, well, are you sure you are? Oh, no. What is it, dear? Florist's van. Don't say Greg's back on again. I need a week at a health farm before I can go through all that again. Oh, no, and he's still coming to the wrong door. I'll go. Don't worry, I'll deal with him. But I think it might be for... Afternoon, bunch of red roses. 
card says, with all my deepest love. I told you, you shouldn't read the cards. What's more, you ought to have got the message by now that I am Mrs. France. Miss France lives in the upstairs flat. Oh, these are for Miss France. Oh? No, they're for a Mrs. Uh, Prescott. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, right. <laughs> Cheerio, then. I must put these in water. <laughs> Two dozen, oh dear. The silly, extravagant boy. <laughs> Granny? Oh. Oh. Oh, Claire. Um, you might have not. But I brought you that book you asked about, Coping with Loneliness. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, dear. But, um, uh, don't let me keep you. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Claire. Aubrey, may I introduce my granddaughter, Claire? Enchanted, my dear. <laughs> but there must be some mistake. Mistake? Surely when Eleanor said granddaughter, she must have meant that you were her daughter. Uh... <laughs> Aubrey, you ridiculous man. <laughs> Claire, don't listen to a word he says. I won't. <laughs> Aubrey and I met at the bridge club. And since then, neither of our lives has been the same. Eh, night of my life? <laughs> Aubrey, <laughs> part of all is our fault. What? Oh, <laughs> yes, of course, I see. <laughs> yes, I mean we. Um, I must go. I'll leave you with that book, Granny, on um, coping with loneliness. Oh, uh, <laughs> thank you, Claire. Now, Eleanor, where were we? I think we were just discussing how we might spend the evening. <laughs> where we might go for the evening. Well, I, I thought we, we might start with a little candlelit dinner at Luigi's in the high street. Oh, Aubrey, that would be lovely. Yes. But it's the second time this week, and you've sent me all those flowers. Are you sure you can afford it on a pension? Oh, that's all right, my dear. You see, um, I'm index-linked. <laughs> well, are you? Good evening, Sarah, dear. Good evening, Mother. I wondered if you'd have gone to bed yet. Well, as you see, just about to. Oh, I'm sure you've got time for just a quick cup of coffee. Quick cup of coffee. And a little chat? A little chat. I've got so much to tell you. Oh, have you, Mother? <laughs> And I had the fagato, and uh, Aubrey chose the salt and bocca. And then, when the waiter came round with a sweet trolley, I said I wouldn't have anything. And... Do you know what Aubrey said? Do you know what Aubrey said? <laughs> no, no, I don't. He said, I suppose you think you're sweet enough already, Eleanor. <laughs> oh. Oh, did he? Isn't he dreadful? Yes. What did you say, Sarah? Oh, oh, nothing. Anyway, there was so much to choose from. Um, caramelised oranges and a kind of uh, black forest gatto and then a sort of Italian strawberry shortcake with fresh fruit on it and, oh, and a, a lemon syrup <laughs> and a creme there. And so... <laughs> ah, Claire. Mummy, you're not in bed yet then? Well, I was just about to, oh, but... Oh, uh, I'm having such difficulty getting to sleep. Yeah, so am I. I just feel so miserable. And I just keep thinking about Greg and... Oh. I wondered, would you just like to come up to the flat and have a quick cup of coffee? <laughs> quick cup of coffee. And a little, little chat. chat. <laughs> little Oh, Ruffler, I'm sorry. It's all this late-night agony art business, isn't it? Yes. I don't know which is more dispiriting, love's young dream shattered or love's slightly more mature dream firing on all cylinders. And still the romantic flowers keep on coming. Oh, yes, and still to the wrong door, all those red roses. None of them ever for you. Uh, sorry, I'm sounding pathetic again. No more than usual. Oh, thanks. You know, maybe I should send you some flowers from a mystery admirer. That might start your mother and daughter thinking. 
A sweet thought, Russell. But I'm afraid they're both far too self-absorbed at the moment to notice if a knight in shining armour arrived and carried me away on a white horse. Uh, the geriatric passion shows no sign of cooling off. Uh, rather the reverse. Just about coming to the boil, I'd say. Must be something they're putting in the sanatogen. <laughs> and how serious do you think it is? Serious? Mm. In the sense of where do you think it's going? Where do I think it's going? I think it's gone anyway, it's going. Why, where else do you think it could go? Marriage. Marriage? Good heavens, I never thought of that. Mm. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh, no. Afternoon, bunch of red roses. I'm not blind. I can see it's a bunch of red roses. Look, how many times do I have to tell you Mrs. Prescott is in the basement flat? Ah, yeah, but I'm sure these lot are for Mrs. Prescott. Look, it says. It says for Mrs. Prescott. Yeah, eh? Oh, yeah, sorry, I could have sworn. No, I'll give them to her. It's funny that I was absolutely certain. Thank that they were you. For... Oh, I thought I heard the van. Five minutes late this morning. Thank you so much, dear. Anytime. Aubrey's so attentive, you know, it's almost becoming embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. Still all men are like that, aren't they? Just big softies at heart. Do you reckon Winston Churchill was a great big softie at heart? <laughs> I don't see that Winston Churchill is relevant, dear. I thought Winston Churchill was always relevant. I don't know what gave you that idea, Sarah. I don't know these in water. Mother. Yes, dear. About you and Aubrey. Yes. How serious is it? Serious? Well, I mean, you do seem to be getting on frightfully well. Oh, yes. And you neither of you got any ties. Oh, I see what you mean, Sarah. Oh, it's far too early to be thinking in those terms. Ah. No, I'm sure there won't be any talk of that kind of thing. Right. For at least another week. <laughs> <laughs> no. Now, will you get the point into your thick skull? No, look, there's another one for France. Oh. Card says, darling, can't we start again? I told you, you shouldn't read the... It says Miss France. As I have told you approximately three million times, my name is Mrs. France. Oh, I'm sorry. Not half as sorry as I am. You realise what this means? No. It means I'm going to have two of them mooning round the house. Goodbye. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Eleanor, but I'm afraid that's all the royal family stuff I've got. Hmm. Do you think there's anything here that might do? Hmm? No. Somehow I can't see myself in that. <laughs> Could have worn it a few years back, but not now. Haven't got the legs anymore. Oh, I am sorry. <laughs> and you haven't got anything specifically about the... Father, what are you doing here? Oh, uh... I was just looking for a, a birthday present for Vera Poling. But anyway, I must be on my way now. Thank you so much, Russell. And see you later, Sarah, dear. Birthday present for Vera Poling. First time she'd mentioned her. What did she ask for? She asked if I'd got anything on the Queen Mother. Oh, no. What do you mean? Colour-coordinated costumes. Ideal for wearing to weddings. Exactly. I wonder where she's going shopping. Why? Oh, dear, it's worse than I thought. What? She's looking at hats. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm afraid it all looks pretty ominous. I mean, photographs of the Queen Mother are one thing, but if Mother's looking at hats... 
Wedding bells, you reckon? Yes. I'll be surprised if by the end of the year she isn't Mrs. App Hopkins. App Hopkins? Yes. It's Aubrey App Hopkins. Unusual name, isn't it? Hmm. Why, have you heard something about anyone with that name? Yes, actually, I have. I thought it'd do you good to get out for an evening. Mm. You know, take your mind off Greg. Mm. I told you not to mention his name. I didn't. <laughs> oh, let's talk about something else. Yes. You know he's back. Who? Oh, you mean your friend, the one with the mm, sleek back blonde hair and the, mm, drives a red Porsche? He, you still keep sending you roses. Well, I mean, what are you babbling on about? I'm not mentioning his name. Oh, yes. <laughs> I do mean Greg. He's back. Been in touch? Only to flowers. And when he is in touch? I hope I'll have the strength of character to tell him to go and jump in a vat of sulfuric acid. Ah, well, very picturesque. And do you think you will have the strength of character? I don't know. Oh, Claire. One more invitation to a candlelit dinner and you'll go all gooey again. That's what worries me. Oh, look, we came here to stop talking about, 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 about the person we're not supposed to be talking about. It's difficult, though. Why? This is the place where he always used to bring me. What? And this is the cocktail I always used to have when I was out with him. Claim idiot! Why did you suggest it? And I suppose that's the restaurant where you went for your candlelit dinners. Yes. Why, the two-timing swine! What? He's there with another woman. Well, that just goes to prove what I've always said about Greg. No, not Greg, Mummy. Look, Aubrey. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Come in, Mother. Sarah, dear. Just to say I'll be out most of the day if anyone calls. Well, I'll be at work all day, so... Yes, but if anything should come for me, you know, anything at all, um, uh, could you put them in water? Yes, well, as I said, I probably won't be back till about seven. I'm going up to London. Ah, may I ask why? Oh, just looking at a few things. Don't you find it's difficult to get a decent hat locally? Hat? Listen, Mother. What, dear? About Aubrey. What, dear? There's something you must know. What? He... He has other girlfriends. Sarah, may I say I'm severely disappointed in you? What? I suppose it's quite understandable that you, as a, a lonely widow, should feel somewhat bitter and resentful. Why not? But that that bitterness and resentment should lead you to make up vicious lies about Aubrey, I find unworthy of you and severely disappointing. But they're not lies. Goodbye, I... Sarah. As I say, I'll be back about seven, and I'll leave you to think about what you've just said. <laughs> Good afternoon, my dear. I had, in fact, come to call on your lovely grandmother, but I got no reply from her doorbell. No, she's out. So's Mummy. You do. Come in. Oh, thank you. That's most kind. <laughs> How many sugars? Two, please. Contrary to appearances, I'm still not sweet enough. Oh, really? <laughs> there. Thank you. Aubrey, there's something I want to ask you. What? Are your intentions towards my grandmother honourable? I, I'm afraid, my dear, that nowadays my intentions towards all women are honourable. <laughs> Worse luck. That's not what I meant. You know I presume that she's fallen for you rather heavily. Well, you know, some of us haven't got that certain je ne sais quoi, and some of us have. Huh. <laughs> I beg your pardon? I said huh, and I meant huh. Oh. Well, I've been doing a bit of research. And it seems that Granny is not the only local widow that you're giving the Red Roses treatment to, is she? Well, surely it can't hurt to bring a little romance into an elderly lady's life, can it? No, so long as the elderly lady in question knows that that's all you're doing. 
But when it gets to the point of Granny going up to London to look at hats... Hats? Oh, dear, I didn't realise it had got to that stage. Well, it has. You know, Aubrey, two-timing is the same offence whatever age you are. Oh, dear, look, uh, perhaps... Uh, perhaps I'd better be on my way. Sit down! <laughs> now, listen, Aubrey, it's time you heard a few home truths. Is it? Oh, dear. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> oh, goodness me, Sarah, no. You don't think I ever for a moment took him seriously, do you? Well, you gave a fairly convincing impression of it. I mean, you were looking at photographs of the Queen Mother, Mother. Oh, I see. So it's wrong to be patriotic now, is it? <sighs> oh, I could see from the start, long before Claire told me, that Aubrey was just an old rogue. I wasn't born yesterday, you know. That's true. <laughs> Aubrey was good company, I agree, but not my sort of person at all. Really, Granny? Didn't seem that way at times. Oh, Claire, you should know. I've always gone for the kind of man who's more... more... what's the word? Churchillian? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, dear. Uh, apropos of nothing, Claire, have you heard yet from your friend Greg? No. Well, my advice to you on that matter is... Oh, I'll get it. It might be for me. No, I don't mind it. <laughs> Morning. More red roses. How many times do I have to tell you... Hundreds of them this morning. I am Mrs. Franz. One for Mrs. Prescott. Oh, thank you. Can't say sorry, just that. No, I should tell him I think so. One for Mrs. Will Ms. you get it Franz? clear? Oh. Card says, darling, come. I don't care what the card says. Can you return these to the sender, please? Return them? Yep. But this says get lost. Exactly. Well done, Claire, love. Oh, I thought the vat of sulfuric acid might be overdoing it a bit. <laughs> All right, I'll send them back. Oh, and this lot's for Mrs. Fat. What? <laughs> Me? Well, there must be some mistake. Oh, dear old Russell, you must have. Card says, thanks for listening. To rather. Thanks for listening. That's a laugh. It's always Russell who listens to me. Oh. Claire. Mother. Thank you. <laughs>